African Union Commission Mosa Faki has called on all political stakeholders in Cameroon to exercise maximum restraint. Faki wants them to refrain from any statement or action that could heighten tensions in the Central African nation. He says he is closely following developments in Cameroon after the October the 7th polls and insists that all claims relating to the electoral process be handled through the existing legal mechanisms. Africa. Let's now bring in African Affairs Analyst Ademola Oshodi uh, to talk to us more about this via Skype. Ademola, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us this time. Hello Ademola, are you there? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Oh yes, very top of the afternoon to you. Uh, well, I'm very sure you are following the developments in Cameroon. Uh, one of the um contenders uh, come to his name of course is come to of course is uh, you know demanding a probe into what he called false television report and uh, saying that uh, the amnesty international has uh, you know scored the october the 7th elections high do you think that this is just a um you know a cry of wolf when there is none well, it's, it's hard to, um, to determine exactly what he's saying and uh, what, what, what aspect of the election he's talking about. Uh, the election did take place, uh, that's for sure. Uh, whether it uh, actually represents the views of the majority of the voters is a different matter. But um, I know Amnesty International's report stated that um, you know, there was, you know, that generally it was a calm atmosphere in which the election was conducted. But uh, in many parts of Cameroon, the election never took place. The Anglophone part of uh, uh, the West, or the Anglophone part of Cameroon, the elections did take place. as a, a five percent turnout along those lines. So, in many cases, the uh, the, the the candidate has uh, has a point. But overall, uh, elections did take place, and it wasn't as uh, you know fractious or violent as uh, we expected. All right, Tip. Well. Uh, from what we see, and from all indications as well, Paul Beer, the current president, uh, very likely will retain the seats for a seventh term. What exactly do you think he needs to be looking at? Or let me just leave it open now that whoever becomes the president, which area do you think such an individual should be focusing on? Obviously, it would be the Anglophile part of Cameroon, the Western part of Cameroon, uh, parts of Cameroon that was you know, years ago, in the 60s, were part of Nigeria, but they had their own uh, um, you know, election and chose to join Cameroon. Uh, that place has been, uh, you know, agitating for more freedom of expression. Their language should be respected. Their culture. And uh, we also see uh, insurrection. There's a rebel group that have started there. So we have uh, over 300,000 displaced people. Uh, depends on what uh, figure or what statistics you're going to follow. So that place is very restive, and that place needs to be settled. Uh, it's also an uh, issue with Cameroon and Boko around uh, the north, uh, which is a big problem in West Africa, especially with Nigeria and Niger. Uh, that has to be taken care of. But uh, we know that the West, the West is also very present in Cameroon. We have the Americans there trying to ensure that uh, the security outfits are well equipped and well trained. Uh, so the two main issues are issues of the Anglophile and Al Boko Haram. Depends on whose point of view will take first or second in precedence. But that's what the next person that uh, becomes the president of Cameroon should look into. All right, does it, as an African, does it evoke any positive thoughts in you or any joy in you that an individual, you know, who has been in power, you know, for more than 30 years now still wants to be president when the economy, as it were, isn't doing well, the life of the people isn't getting any better? Does it inspire, you know, joy in you as an African? Well... As long as there's a free and fair process of choosing their leader, anybody can be there for 60, 100 years. Who cares? As long as the people choose that person. So if the Cameroonians do come out to vote and if, if their views, their, their rights have been respected in the voting process and they choose to have a leader that's been there for 36 years and, and counting, then so be it. 
But um, in many cases, the elections in Cameroon have not been that free and fair. It's been uh, judged to be very, very uh, one-sided uh, with uh, you know issues of uh, multi-party and uh, issues of elections. Saying, well, it's not really a multi-party system. It's just a one-party system with, with uh, weak, uh, fractured opposition. But overall, if the people choose choose it, so be it. But in the case of Cameroon. It's not the case. The election is not truly free and fair, and uh, every international body, including the uh, uh, the European Union, the Americans, uh, of course, the United Nations, have, uh, have judged it to be uh, not a not a fair process. The African Union, so to say, has uh, been rather silent so far. So we'll have to hear their their say and how they see the election. But uh, we've had leaders in Africa that have been there for a while. We've had uh, Mugabe in uh, Zimbabwe that's been there for longer. We had Gaddafi. But in Cameroon, we have somebody that's been there that's uh, you know, quite close to, the, to, uh, to other parts of Africa where democracy and elections have been taking place steadily for the past 10, 20, 30 years. And we have one individual there for 36 years. It's, it's rather odd, so to speak. Ademola Oshodi, public affairs analyst, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this time.